Infiltrate the Digital Dragon Veins, Part 1, and no battle. I have always been afraid of people seeing the real me, unveiled and exposed. I did not belong anywhere in my homeworld, and I was no different for a while while I first came to Tokyo. Always keeping my gaze to the ground, not really good at any sports or anything, never even remotely approachable, and certainly never fitting in with anything anyone was doing. I didn't have a shred of self-confidence, so I did my best to stay unseen and simply get by, one day at a time. Eventually, I discovered the wide world of anime, manga, games, and light novels here in Tokyo. I became obsessed with it. For the first time, I could say with absolute confidence that I really liked a certain part of the culture here. And this was further emphasized when I learned about the existence of cosplay, the act of dressing up like the characters from these cultural works. I learned that here in Akihabara, there are tons of people who have really devoted themselves to that. <laughs> there are people who accept me for who I am, even if they don't understand the things I like. Aww, at least he recognizes Akihabara's trying. I felt like I'd finally found a place where I could fit in. Yet even with this newfound culture, I was still afraid to show people the real me for a very, very long time. But I sometimes have to wonder, what even is the real me? Who exactly am I? My desire to cosplay is very real, after all. So if you were to take that away... What would remain? Would I even be the real me anymore? Weird existential crisis. I'm sorry. I used your situation as pretext to excuse saying I dislike Team Blows. But I, I know it's nothing more than that, an excuse. I'm really just scared of him. I don't have a lot of self-confidence, so he's imposing. Topo pause. Why aren't we like in the middle of talking to Kern? But you're so self-assured when you cosplay. When I cosplay, I feel like a totally different person. It's like when I'm wearing the outfit of a really cool character, I feel like I inherit the character's worth too. But take that costume off, and I'm like this. Too scared to show anybody the real me. I guess this is uh, relatable to people who play D&D, or actual cosplayers. I'm guessing those aren't quite as common as D&D uh, players. I know it's lousy time to say this, but the idea of this collab really frightens me. Is it because of what Tindalo said? Everything laid out, nothing to hide. Yeah. It made me realize that anything we produce in collaboration will involve exposing yourselves a little. The idea of showing parts of me that I've kept hidden all this time to total strangers. Well, you can imagine how that makes me feel. What's your take on it, Arthur? It's, uh, definitely... I'd be terrified, too. Right? It's impossible not to find it at least a little bit scary. I mean... Exposing your deepest, darkest secrets to tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. So many of them poised to laugh at you or respond with hateful comments. But what other options do we have? Could be a blessing in disguise. We could learn to overcome that fear. You know, you really are an amazing person. Unlike me, you really believe in who you are and what you stand for. The intense sword fight you had with the Team Bliss proxies and the studio cross as Katoblipas' bind. Hey, we're not that different. I'm no different from you. But I... I can't do anything even close to what you did back there, Arthur. Hey, you have an amazing power all your own. I saw it during the cosplay event. You can fix all eyes squarely on you. Oh, th that's... Very different, though. 
I'm talking about real strength, real power. Not that kind of thing. I mean, that's just something inherent. I didn't have to learn it or train for it. It just happens. Hey, it's the same way with my sword. I just had it one day. I didn't earn it in any way. Really? So, just like my power after all then? I think the real me, or you, is a miss. We never actually see who we really are. I'm... not even sure if such a thing exists. There, then. It's... It's the same for you, then. You're just as unsure as I am. I had no idea. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to sound rude. Just the thought that we're not so different made me kind of happy and... Just then. Oh dear, what sort of nonsense are you concerning yourself with, Trophy? You are a but a vessel within which dwells the offering that serves as this game's prize. It's best if you involve yourself in nothing whatsoever. This game must continue indefinitely after all. Huh? Yet its players must never stop believing that it's possible to complete. Okay, I guess we just didn't see the full scene. Some dialogue was cut out before. We cannot have players retiring, thinking the game cannot or should not be won, even if victory is always just out of reach. I hope you understand the effort that goes into maintaining such a delicate balance. Is this voice coming from above us? I suppose introductions are in order, as from your perspective. This is our first time meeting. Is it not, Trophy? The girl looks down upon you from the palm of a massive mech, hovering perfectly still in the air. What? What's going on? The girl's eyes have a depth to them that suggests a life exponentially longer than her figure would imply, and a wisdom approaching omniscience. Katobopas is absolutely dumbstruck by the sight before him, and glances over at you with a look of desperation in his eyes. Hoping you can help him make some sense of what he sees. Katobopas, stay back! Oh, okay. Maybe we continue. The girl dismisses your reaction with casual apathy, apparent in both in her voice and on her face. And you are... Who are you and what do you want? I'm the Guildmaster of the Rulemakers. The true guild of the East. You may call me Curran. The rule makers? I believe you already know Bertro and Duo. I am a child prodigy of the same ilk. I was born in the same lab as those two, in fact. Though I suppose you needn't worry about any of that. I merely introduced myself as a matter of convenience for you, Trophy as I know it helps in contextualizing conversations. I have an actual name, you know. To us, you are a trophy, nothing more. It's nothing personal, to be honest. We simply find individual distinction meaningless on the whole. The exception to this is one's individual rule within this game we all play. That, and that alone, is of consequence to us. Okay? So what do you want? Why are you here? I'm glad I don't have to seek you out. Straight to the point. I can respect that. Simply put, I have a proposition for you regarding where to go from here. Stay put, I assume. I merely wanted to ask if you'd be willing to give me that ring of yours. What? No, that's a memento from Mr. Mononobe, I think. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Warmonger's Fortress in the West. Yes, we are still relevant. Excellent contributions to the Counselor Tanatomo. Ah, uh, you honor me with your praise, my lord, but I am undeserving of it. Following a strategy meeting of the Warmonger's War Council, Tanatomo and Yoritomo walk in stride with one another. Well met, you two. I know you must be tired from the long meeting. 
But may I borrow just a moment of your time? Ah, Mephistopheles. Of course, of course. What can I do for you? Please do excuse me then, my lord. I'll leave you to your business here. No, no. Let's not be hasty. Did I not greet you both? P Pardon? Mephistopheles glances at the Orb of Wisdom Tantoma was holding. It seems his business concerns you as well, Counselor. Let us hear him out. Uh, of course, my lord. If that is what you wish. I am much obliged to you both. Now then, on to the matter at hand. Perhaps the topic will be of no surprise. I wish to discuss the absence of the Warmonger's Guildmaster. I presume that you both are more or less up to speed on the circumstances of his departure, no? Mephistopheles politely hints at the elephant in the room. Virtuo, having escaped alongside his would-be replacement, Duo, leaving the Guildmaster seat vacant with no contingency plan. I have been fully briefed on the situation, yes. The intel gathering skills of the counselor here are second to none. I wonder how he's gathering it. A flattery, my lord. Indeed, the counselor is most adept. Very well, allow me to continue then. To be quite frank, the warmongers are presently in a state of great confusion and disorder. No successor has been chosen, and thus no guildmaster appointed. This has left a palpable gap in her defenses. We must not permit this leaderless state to continue for much longer, lest it affect our interactions with other guilds. There are, admittedly, some upsides to having no administrator breathing down our necks, but there are many disadvantages too. Thus, I thought perhaps we could open discussions and try to eke out whatever small benefits may avail themselves to us. As you know, the invaders' guildmasters is not much for words. So it would best behoove us to focus on establishing a dialogue with the rule makers' guildmaster at this time. There are preparations that would need to be made for such a dialogue. I trust you've accounted for this. Indeed. It's precisely for that reason I, that I requested to speak with you both. I wish to borrow the counselor, you see. With all due respect, what possible aid do you think I can provide in dealing with one of the true guildmasters? To say there is a significant difference in both the quality and quantity of intel possessed by the three true guildmasters and virtually anyone else would be an understatement. It takes less than a moment for Tanatomo to conclude that, despite being privy to vast amounts of information, not a single morsel of it all would be of interest to the rule makers. Oh, far more than you realize, dear counselor. And yet, in the scheme I have devised, you will surely be of assistance. For what I have envisioned, this orb you bear makes you an indispensable component. Mephistopheles gestures towards Tanatomo's sacred artifact. And just how is my orb going to help us in negotiations with the Guildmaster of the Rulemakers? Its rule is not exactly what one might consider beneficial for such a situation. The orb is a sacred artifact that's been with Tanatoma since birth, and signifies that its bearer is one of the eight dog warriors of the Land of Law. Alright, I had no idea the orbs were actually considered the sacred artifacts, but that's... I guess it makes sense since they are bearers of memories, and uh, we do know that they are supposed to bear Yatsufuso's memories. Each of the eight orbs has a distinctive symbol within it, along with healing powers and a purported ability to resonate with other orbs. There are certainly precious sacred artifacts in their own right, but the rules shouldn't be powerful or notable enough to be of even mild interest to the three true guilds. You're correct. The rule within that orb is neither rare nor of any great power. However, based on my research, its origin and structure are tremendously unique. Supposedly, in the final moments of a certain transient's life, their being was split in eight and birthed the orbs. You may be wondering, how might such an unusual state of affairs come about? Not just anyone could subdivide their own consciousness with their dying breath, after all. So what manner of great truths do you suppose these orbs may conceal? 
Here in Tokyo, there is a certain other individual who's gone through something very similar to this. Ah, yes, the comparisons. Uh, which have been brought up by Ellie before, or at least uh, narratively in juxtaposition with Ellie's search for the orbs. Someone involved with the game's administration divided his consciousness into three upon his own end. Guildmaster Bertrand, in possession of one of these fragments, would go on to display behavior never witnessed before in any of the loops, just prior to his own passing. What might he have acquired from that fragment, do you think? What effects did the memories it held have on him? What could the act of one individual dividing into many truly mean for the game and us? And what could it mean for one of the game's players to acquire one of these parts? We enter the realm of personal speculation from here, but as I see it, I can only conclude that the prodigies of the three true guilds have been watching all of this unfold as they are wont to do. Yet from this point forth, I believe even they would do more than simply observe. Well, as is the case with Curran, here we are. Narrative splicing. You want my ring? The one Mr. Nobi gave me. That is correct. I must have the ring presented to you by the monitoring terminal you call Mononobe. A monitoring terminal, huh? So I guess he's kind of like uh, the guildmasters themselves. Somewhat patronizingly, Kern points to the ring on your finger. Of course, please do name your price if you wish for something in exchange. If it is within my power, I will happily provide it. I, uh... How about paying up front with some info? Impressive. Your composure is exemplary. I see now that this loop has gifted you with the force of personality. It would make an excellent politician. Were the student's statesman of the West, Yoritomo, to hear of such scheming, I dare he'd make quite a face. Once again, I would like to reiterate my vested interest here. I seek only for the game to continue indefinitely. My duty is to seek out any actions that may harm this continuity and eliminate them. Hmm. And as you are likely already aware, four world representatives have recently dropped out. Hmm. The loops have virtually continued onwards and onwards, but uh, that's not necessarily the goal of everyone, as we saw with the genociders. But it seems at least with this, at least with the three true guild masters, like with Bertro, he tried to end the loop by dropping the moon, and Kern seems to want to continue as well. I think that might actually go in contradiction to the goals of some of the members below them. As the thoughts of the Old Ones, Searcher of Yggdrasil, Tuscatlipoca of Eldorado, and Shiva of Divaloka. The fact that some players will leave play from time to time is within expected parameters, of course. No one can last forever. But this rate of forfeiture is much too high for a single loop. All of us can agree that it's a definite cause for concern. It's a matter of stability at this point. If this trend should persist, it could have a notable effect on the game's continuity. Okay, that makes sense. But why are you telling me this? You should know, I do have some idea of your general plan for this loop. You're plotting to disrupt, halt, or otherwise withdraw yourself from the game, no? And at the heart of that scheme lies the ring you were given by your former mentor, the terminal assigned to monitor you. A ring which bestows upon you a system you've come to know in this loop as a double dragon. Were you to part with it, your actions would be regarded as far less of a wild card, and much of the heat on you would be redirected elsewhere. As it stands, there are a number of players who actually approve of you having been given a means of resistance. Which has led us to conclude that leaving matters in the hands of those players will not improve the situation. Uh, probably referring to some of their people like Smokey God. Uh, at least, for the invaders. 
So it would be best for all parties, yourself included, if you let me have the ring now. Do you understand? You really thought that'd convince me? I want to see this game end, period. For a prodigy, you're not very smart. Then what if I told you that your body will not last long, should you choose to continue using that ring? What? It brings forth an inconsistency within your body, which acts as a battle zone, in order to produce an exception territory. Just how long do you think that House of Cards can stand? Think back. Each time you've used that technique, it's taken a significant physical toll on you, has it not? At this rate, it won't be long before you tread the same unfortunate path as your former mentor. In other words, if you keep that ring, you may find yourself quite literally torn to pieces before you know it. Though I suppose you would get your wish then, as the game would be well and truly finished with its prize bent and broken. Not quite what you had in mind for ending it, now, is it? Therefore, I believe it would be mutually beneficial if you were to give me that ring. Retaining it would be foolish. Nice try, but the answer is still no. I just need to use it sparingly. I understand, and I certainly am not suggesting you give it to me without compensation. What would you take for it? I could pay you as much coin as the app allows any account to have. I think we've had too much coin campaigns, no thank you. You could live a life of luxury most others could only dream of for the remainder of this loop. Alright, I'll play along. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Though that coin is awfully tempting. Excellent. What is it? As I said before, you need only name your price. If you're the guild master, then I assume you have one of the boxes. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> I had a feeling you might suggest that. You're referring to this, I believe. Kern produces a mechanical box, her guild's memory unit. This is indeed one of the three fragments of the memories belonging to the monitor terminal you call Mr. Mononobe. We haven't had the time to properly scrutinize its contents just yet, but I was aware of your desire to obtain it. I'm afraid, however, that this is off the table for trading, even if you should willingly part with the ring in exchange. Oh? And why is that exactly? You mustn't want this ring too badly. Unless you have another reason. You simply don't understand the true value of accumulated data, Trophy. The data in this unit is a precious resource. Absolutely indispensable to the realization of my Plan C. I am, frankly, the only one who can harness that resource. Someone like you simply wouldn't know what to do with it. Let's see about that. That's a piece of my dear teacher. We talk about it like it's mind or. Let me ask you a question then. Why are you so obsessed with the data terminal assigned to monitor you? He wasn't doing so for your benefit. He didn't stay by your side out of concern. You must know that. He merely served as a vessel for recording memories of the heroes who attract the world representatives to this game. The heroes who attract the world representatives to this game? Hmm. This is the first time we're hearing what his uh, role is from someone else that, you know, is less cryptic. Uh, this is interesting because we've learned all about, uh, you know, world type units and world pillars and their association with each other. Um, and world representatives and how they sustain the world. And we also learn about how infernal units are tied to shadows and, uh, I guess, just split identities and all that. Um, but as for heroes, they kind of just have this weird existence uh, where they have their own attribute, but at the same time they don't really have any... they hadn't had really any significance or any consistent theme within this story. Um, say for one, that was not really explicit until now it was pointed out and that's the fact that they often have some sort of connection to uh the world representatives either that or the protagonists themselves who uh, represent some hero um you know within one of our souls because uh one pertinent example would be a horkei okami of course whose variant his first variant anyways was uh in valiant type i wouldn't say he necessarily attract a corporate but uh there, there is that connection where corporate worker i actually do think he likes uh horkei okami at least within the gameplay relationship chart but it's nice to see that there is a role of heroes in this game too not just world representatives and uh split off shadows
It's also the first time we heard Mr. Nomi had a role of uh, doing something that doesn't involve us personally. When those representatives look at you, they see not you as you are but the face of another they once held here. Ah, okay, so that's confirmation. The, the heroes that generally we attract world representatives are the ones inside us, the heroes. Uh, the souls, rather. The real you is of little value to anyone in this game. You should thus owe that monitor terminal no debt of gratitude. Stop it! Just stop talking! Stop belittling, Arthur. Katobo Pus had been merely listening to the conversation this whole time, uncertain what to say or even what to think. But that uncertainty has now given way to indignation. I'm still not sure what you're talking about, but... But... He looks into the girl's eyes, which seem to seal off a deep knowledge far beyond his reach. But I can't just stand here and listen to you tell someone how little value you think they have. It's just not right. No one person should ever get to decide someone else's worth. Not you, nor anyone else. You don't know the first thing about Arathen. So don't pretend like you do. It's... it's uncalled for. <sighs> the Tobopas. I see. It seems you have not been persuaded then. These negotiations have failed. Well, that's putting it lightly. But did you honestly think they'd succeed? This world still has many elements in it that defy reason, and the unreasonable is the only thing I cannot grasp. So regularly, this is where the amicable negotiation phase must come to an end. Stop. Just leave the mechanical box. Oh, I'd think that would be obvious. I'm certainly not going to shrug my shoulder and go back from whence I came. Oh, <laughs> what? They're actually fighting? Oh, no, never mind. They're getting away. What the? Hey, how'd she get so far away? Wait, no, this is... Hey, that's the same technology as, uh... What's his face? Yeah, um, Algernon. I remember that gun click. He was using time travel. Ooh, rare art. Nice. Uh. At the edge of your vision, you can see Katobopas completely frozen in place. I can't move a muscle? Has time been stopped? No. This is something different. Trophy, at this moment, it must feel as though time is frozen for you now. But that is not quite correct. It's rather the opposite. I have sped up time considerably for myself. It is a form of time travel, and you are utterly incapable of keeping up with me while it is enacted. Resistance is futile. There is nothing you can do to stop me. Therefore, I will be helping myself to that ring of yours. Current extends a hand towards your own, honing in on that ring you wear on your finger. Okay, no matter how fast she goes, like, we should be able to, like, somehow compensate our own perception to perceive her. Stop! Don't you dare touch it! All we need to do is endure this for one loop, and all previously mentioned problems will cease to be an issue. The monitor terminal you know as Mr. Mononobe will be a different person entirely when you meet in the next loop. But you won't know any better, because you'll have no memories of Mr. Mononobi from this loop. No. You can't do this! Just let me move! Just a little! Is it time for Team Blows? Current pulls on your ring, and moments before it slips off... What? What? A mass of blinding light erupts from your body, engulfing the whole of your surroundings. That somehow we cause an exception? Those child prodigies who serve as guild masters act as if there's nothing in this world they don't know. But that is patently untrue. We each are bound by our roles and rules. And those prodigies are limited as well by the rules they are born into. Do they not draw Isaac's art by this point? <laughs> they are a collectivist in nature, and regard those others born in the lab alongside them as extensions of themselves. This is due to a general inability to recognize others as anything more than their roles, 
disregarding individual identities. To them, the world is not but systems. They cannot comprehend the relevance and spiritual importance of individuality. Hmm. So they are geniuses, and but it seems their genius is, at least according to Mephistopheles, stuck to the perception of cross loops. Uh, that is to say, what stays the same, the rules. They don't really give a damn about uh, their individuality, the forms in each loop. Ordinarily, that would not be a cause for concern. But this is far from an ordinary situation. And to that end, everything depends on our favorable dealings with that guildmaster. What's the little Solomon doing there? What is this light? Infiltrate the Digital Dragon Veins, Part 2. <sighs> it happens the very moment Curtin touches your ring. A mass of blinding light erupts from your body in all the colors of the rainbow, engulfing the whole of your surroundings. What? What's going on? A ward of protection, but how can it be so strong? She quickly removes her hand from the ring and the light gradually subsides, seemingly retracting back into you. I can move again. That was a close one. Are you okay, Harrison? The sensation of being as if frozen in time dissipates along with the light, and the world once more moves at its original speed. What was that? A call? Now? Hello, am I speaking with the Guildmaster of the Rulemakers? You are Mephistopheles of the Warmongers' main players. This is a private secret line for exclusive use of the prodigies of the three true guilds. How did he get this number? <laughs> we have our methods. That aside, you are aware that our guildmaster seat is presently vacant, no? I'd rather not presume, but I take it you'd prefer no major incidents occur while your record keeper is expired. Therefore, after some consideration and with all due apologies, I've decided to contact you directly to discuss our plans. Sorry, but I'm busy right now. This will have to wait for another time. It will only take a moment, and there may be some valuable information in it for you if you'll hear me out. Namely, classified intel on the state of affairs in Akihabara, and related intel pertaining to the invader's guildmaster. What? So, uh, may I continue then? Do consider our respective positions and what you may stand to gain here. What I stand to gain? Are you seriously implying that you, a mere player, possess information that I do not have? I cannot firmly guarantee that, but there is certainly information to be found out there which has eluded you. Such as the contents of the other two fragments of memories from the trophy's monitor terminal, for one. Hmm. Referring to, I guess, Bertrose and uh, Isaac's terminals. Yes, the monitor terminal that broke down and went offline. His memories were split into three. Each of those fragments was stored in a special memory unit, which you three prodigious skilled masters collected. You've no doubt analyzed yours and gleaned some form of utterly invaluable data from it. Surely that would have led you to ponder the contents of the other two. Why would the Warmonger's Guildmaster have done something so drastic? Why has the Invader's Guildmaster hidden himself away and cut off all communication with the outside? What groundbreaking data is hidden away in the memories of the one who monitored the trophy directly over the countless loops? Uh, do they mean that Lil Salmon himself is also a split memory of Mr. Mononobe? 
That can't be right. I'm pretty sure he says his own entity. Unless he's talking about the ring he possesses along with us. Be that as it may, that still doesn't answer the question of what, if anything, a mere player such as you can know. Of course, I am as you say, but a humble player in this game. However, I am something as else as well. <laughs> oh boy, finally the similarities are being explained to uh, Lil Solomon. Um, he did seem to be hiding some greater importance that we didn't know beforehand, well, the previous chapter, um, where he was a uh, leading bathing to Mahakal, I believe, or was it Duo? I think it was both. Um, but yeah, he seems to <laughs> kind of be playing with uh, the Guildmasters in a sense, uh, in a way that uh, he knows something that they don't. Now that the terminal is gone, I am the one being in this world who is closest to the truth of the trophy's past. Or, I should say, my other self is. Ah, so there's connection. Very well, in my position as Guildmaster, I do hereby grant the Warmonger's appeal to commence formal discourse. I will follow up with you shortly to arrange a meeting location and other particulars. Will that suffice? That will be absolutely perfect. Until we speak again, then. It's your lucky day, Trophy. I'm going to be taking my leave of you for now. Be sure to take a good care of that ring until our next encounter. Farewell. W wait. What about Mr. Mononobi's memories? Just watch her fly off. <laughs> She got away. That was close. Too close. I'm so glad you're okay, Arthur. I was really shocked by that bright light you gave off earlier. It had me worried. I thought to myself, what if this light dissipates and there's no earth in there? That's true. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually lights mean the summoning, but it seems to be of a different nature. I'm so sorry. I couldn't do anything to help. Not a thing. Hey. What you said made me happy, though. Um, Arathen? I was thinking, maybe we should do the call with Team Los after all. I want to stand with you. Not that I can really do anything to help, but still. With the two of us working together, maybe things can be a little bit better for us both. What do you think? Oh. Uh, you know what? Let's do it, Katoba Pass. Starting with tomorrow's photo shoot. All right, that's great. Oh, and one other thing. I'd like to hear a little more about your past, about what happened to you before you came to Akihabara. If possible, maybe we could talk tonight and you could tell me all about it? Yeah, I can tell you all sorts of things later tonight. And do all sorts of things. Hey! It's Akiha and Leanna for something. Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect! Oh, your talent is palpable! Look this way and show me those pearly whites! Now, strike a pose to really knock him dead! Try to get the angle just right. Oh, nice, nice! Now, let's get even more of your good side! Hey, this is a pretty nice studio. It was an expensive turnout. out. Also, where's the Tinalos? Oh, don't worry about it. An agency I met at an event took care of everything. Oh yeah, we did get the number of some guy. What well, well, the temple busted. That's right, our agency is funding the bill for this one. Just leave all the particulars to us. We got this. In exchange, we only ask that you think of us when it comes time to release photo books and like. And you. You said your name was Akiha Gongin. You've got quite some potential to really make it big. Here, my card. Now, now! No talking during the shoot! Producer's orders! And that's a wrap for the cosplay photo shoot! Shall we take some shots out of the costume as well? You mean like, without makeup? Uh, you know what, sure. Sure, 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 sure. No! What's he saying? You see, this call is all about bringing it on the bush as you, as you naturally are. That sounds good. Please take some of me too, Lian and Chi. I'd say we did some good work here today. I think I managed to capture quite a few different sides of you. 
Is it just me, Katobopaz? Or has your facial expression softened a little since before? You think? Really? I guess I have more motivated than I ever have been before. Well, whatever it is, it's super cool! I can feel the passion right off of ya! Really? I'm so glad to hear that! <laughs> uh, thanks, Akia Gongin. There's no need to get all that sturdy and standoffish now, Katobopaz. <laughs> uh, please, don't touch me! <laughs> uh, ah! I'm sure he can control his power better. I, I, like, I haven't seen him like accidentally use his power for anything yet. Uh, sorry, but it wouldn't be very good if my motivation faltered now, you know? Ah! Tell me you comfort me, buddy! <laughs> there, there, buddy. There, there. This'll do right. <laughs> Poor Ikea. Yes! Yes! That expression is beautiful! Your true nature laid bare for all to see. Nice work again, Arian. So, shall I send the whole set over to Tidalos then? I know I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing the final product. Thanks so much, Lian and Chi. Let's see how this goes. Can't wait to find out. Nice work today. Thanks. Oh boy, I'm actually feeling kind of anxious now. What if we end up getting flamed online? Ugh, I'm a nervous wreck. It'll be okay. Just leave it to me, Katobopas. If you get flamed, I'll put that fire out no problem. Thanks, but no thanks. I think the type of flame you're thinking of is a little different from what I'm talking about. Oh, hey. Didn't realize it was this late already. I've got someplace I need to be. Sorry to duck out early. I was hoping I could see the whole cosplay thing straight to the MCU, but, uh-uh. Best of luck. Aw, uh, leaving already, Akio? What do you have planned this hour? I uh, don't actually know, to be honest. I've just been called out to me with one of the other members of the Craters. Ooh. The other members? You mean like Hecate and Kuniyoshi? Yeah, yeah. Don't know what they want, but I'm happy that they want it for me, at least. <laughs> huh. What do they want, I wonder? Well, if anything happens, I'll be sure to contact you too. Take it easy now. Well, shall we go too, Lian and Chi? That's a drug, Katopo Pass. Someone's been watching Star Wars in Life Under Studios. Hey, hey, hey! You're late! Give me enough time to finish processing your photos, though, at least. I call it Disco Tinlo Special de Cosplay. So, do you love it or do you love it? Given the ample time he had to select photos, design a snazzy UI and organize them within it, Tindlos really seems confident in his work and is visibly excited to show it to you. Incredible! You even have our avatar models in there moving and dancing and getting changed with full voiceover! Hey, Tindlos, make me one! I mean, making avatars is my specialty. This sort of thing is old hat for me. Easy peasy! Can't believe how fast you work. So, ready to lease then. What's the next step? Huh? The next step? Well, did you forget what this was all about? I'd say this is good enough work to call yourself a fully fledged creator. And why was it you were looking to earn that title? To meet with the Akihabara Guildmaster, of course. And I dare say you're ready. The finishing touch, then, is going to be me filming the whole interaction. Think of it like a DVD extra! I'm sorry, what? Uh, uh, you're not sure, I love extra content. That's the spirit, spoken like a true live streamer. You know my slogan now, clean or otherwise. When you collab with me, every secret is exposed. No exceptions! That's the Tito's guarantee! We get the scoop so often it's not just 9 to 5 for us, it's 24 7, baby! Besides, I need to be there for this meeting to happen. Since the Guildmaster only exists online. Huh? I plan on bringing you along anyway. Yeah, that's not the problem. I want to go too, though. Please let me come with you too. <sighs> Didn't expect you to be so vocal about this. When I first met you, I thought you were just a nervous Nelly. But now I see you've got some real resolution in yourself. Oh, that suits me just fine. 
Let's get going! <laughs> Alright! That time to meet the Guildmaster at long last. The Guildmaster of Akia by our creators. How do we go about doing that, though? You said he only exists online, right? Is there a special chat room? Ugh! Yeah, you'd think we'd be able to get good footage from a chat room conversation. This is a live stream. You gotta have the zazz. No movement or visual fare means no viewers. Oh, this is gonna be virtual. Now, come on. I'm going to stick my tongue out, and I want you to try touching it through the screen. I'm gonna stick something else out, and I want you to touch that through the screen too. Turn those sticks, his pointed tongue out, and plasters it right against the other side of the screen. Touch it with your own tongue. <laughs> Let's go. Like this. <laughs> my fingers have actually got wet. Okay, where are the The little bit of food. Ten for that, Tito's. Take a care. Good luck with the collab. The acre of my tongue. Gift of lycanthropy. You'll now inhabit the same dimension I do. <laughs> What's happening? I'm being sucked into the screen. Into an isekai. Uh, where am I? What am I even seeing? Welcome to the dirtiest, most amazing depths of cyberspace. And depths of what? Ah! Tinlos, you're actually here, in person! That's right! This is a different place altogether from the 3D world you know. In layman's terms, you might call this place the Deep Web. So it's like another dimension. The Deep Web. Yeah, yeah, why is it always gotta cut off the cool music? Infiltrate the Digital Dragon Veins, Part 3. There is a battle, that is a tall map with uh, various agents, so probably just mob gore. All right, let's continue. Give me that Tindalo support. The Tindalo support, that 100 FP. Uh, actually, never mind, I'll just... Actually, no, he goes Berserk, give it to me. All right, let's do this. People tend to believe that the truth resides within that which is hidden. Some even go so far as to say that if it's not hidden, it can't be true. Take, for example, one who's committed 10 good deeds in public and one bad deed in private. If that bad deed is discovered, the public will deem the bad to be this individual's true nature. Similarly, if one were to commit 10 wretched deeds in public, but a single good deed in private, that good deed, is, if discovered, will be the only thing anyone remembers. The scale and number of the deeds mean very little. In the end, the more hidden one's actions are, the more value they bear. If this is the case, then it only stands to reason that the most valuable thing in the world must be that which is concealed the very deepest. We hands hunt our prey boundlessly, chasing it into the forest steps imaginable and beyond. Is this team blows? To capture its scent, we seek out its most unclean places, breathing deep the smell of its guts without hesitation. And then, we breathe even deeper and push even farther in. That is the mark of a true hound. My name is Tindalos, and I am known as the Hound of the Old Ones. I seek the most valuable prey. I like to always delve deeper, and then deeper still. If I've set my sights on you, there's no escape, and no one else may claim you. I believe that what exists in the deepest, most hidden parts of this world holds the most value. Therefore, I also believe that what exists in the deepest parts of this world, that which is the most unclean, is the prey most worth pursuing. The deep web? I don't understand. Going by the name alone, this is the heart of a network, I guess. Mm, more like the guts, but you've got the right idea. Think of it as the deepest, darkest place on the network used by the app. By the app itself, huh? We who live here call it the deep web. 
So it's not just you, Tindlos. But, well, of course, turning's there, but is it more than just you two? Huh, maybe Isaac's there. So we're inside the app itself. How's that even possible? Well, that's not really what, who's in here, but avatars of you that I created. What even is an avatar exactly? They've come up a bunch of times. Oh yeah, I was telling you about avatar modeling. I think the world comes from another language where it means descent. In the language it's derived from, the word signifies a manifestation of a being made from a part of their body. I often hear stories of avatars sent into worlds one can't physically visit. Nail on the head! The steep web is one such place that only those who have special avatars can enter. Now, since I got a rule that lets me make avatars, I can bring anyone I want here, effectively. What about Lian and Chi? Isn't she joining us? Huh? Nah, you heard her. She's staying behind. Seems she's got something to take care of on the outside. Uh, but that's besides the point. I'm trying to welcome you to you into the cesspool of all that's unclean this world. This hot spot of misinformation. This. This is the deep part of the internet, and you're standing in it. How does it feel? You got goosebumps. I'm kind of surprised already in the deepest part. No traveling whatsoever required. Tindlos' eyes sparkle with pure giddiness. It's the most animated you've ever seen him yet. I have to admit, I'm a little nervous. Uh, you sure seems like this place. And why would I? Look around you! This place is great! Surrounding you, as far as the eye can see, are countless random clumps of information, just scattered around haphazardly. Each clump is bound together with a literal web, constantly twinkling with pinpricks of light here and there, like a starry sky on fast forward. Those lights are all access lights. There are people following search links, hoping to find info no one else knows about. Kinda mind blowing that so many people would come to this dirty little corner of the net looking for scraps, huh? What? Nobody can resist this good treasure hunt! Everybody just wants that rush of having found the truth that only they know. Taking something that was hidden all this time, and being the one who exposes it to the world? Who doesn't love that feeling? Oh no, Team Lose is cancel culture. I don't think that's a good thing myself. Take the pleasure in exposing someone else that tried to so hard to hide. So why are you telling me you've never found yourself dying of curiosity to learn some forbidden knowledge? Ah, oh, come on! I... I mean... I'd like to hear a little more about your past, about what happened to you before you came to Akihabara. If possible, maybe we could talk tonight, and you could tell me all about it. That's right, that did just happen. I... There's not a soul in this world, or any other, who doesn't just eat up secrets. You can't tell me you've never done it! You've probably been on the receiving end of it a few times, haven't you? Mm. Hey there, can you put your bangs again so we can get a good look at your face? No, stop, please! I have to hide my face no matter who- uh. Giving him no time to vocalize his objections, one of the scouts reaches out and lifts Kotobopas' bangs. Bangs. I have. I've done it. And I've been on the receiving end too. But I'm not always like that, and it's not how people always are. And there are still some people out there who respect the privacy of others, isn't that right, Arthur? Hmm. But you gotta admit, the temptation is always there. Even if you don't go into something thinking you gotta know more. You might find yourself dying to know more anyway, or to share your own secrets. How's it for you, Arthur? Hmm, can't deny it. What? You agree with the marathon? Huh? Seeking out the truth seems to be the common trend here, although Tainlos is framing it in a way where it's uh, obfuscated truth. It happens very moment when current touches your ring. A mass of blinding light erupts from your body in all the colors of the rainbow, engulfing the whole of your surroundings. A word of protection? But how can it be so strong? 
She quickly removes her hand from the ring, and the light gradually subsides, seemingly retracting back into you. What was that light? What was it that startled the girl named Kern so much, and kept her from removing your ring? What is actually happening deep within you, and how is it affecting you? I want to know the truth about myself. So Tindalos, show me how deep this rabbit hole goes. Oh, oh, oh. well said. Let's see you're fully on board. Come with me then. Let's go deeper still. Word of caution though. Don't go touching any of the webs you find along the way. It's pretty much expected here that someone who came before you will have a strong bunch of them to catch unsuspecting victims. Don't forget for even one second that without my guidance, this place would be a death trap. Anyway, that having been said, Team Lowe's channel is a special collaboration crew. Let's go! <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm really scared, but this is for you and Makia Gong and Marathon. Welcome home, Master! Ah! Akio Gongin, you made it! Come on, over here, over here! Akio Gongin excitedly exchanges glances with each member of the Akio Bar Guild as he bounces his way over to the spot Kunyoshi has indicated. Kukun Yoshi! Hecate! Thanks for reaching out to me! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, what the? Uh. <laughs> Sorry! I'm in the middle of working on one of my new stories and I didn't want it to get all crumbled between us. But I have to admit, that aggressively chubby attitude of yours. Mm, I can make it work for one of my characters. I don't really understand what you mean, but I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Akio Gongin, I know we've always avoided you in the past, so it might be out of line for us to ask you to help us now, but... Not at all, not at all. Just something you need and I'll be more than happy to lend a hand. You really are ever the positive fellow, aren't you? Alright then, I'll cut to the chase. Huh? You're having trouble getting in touch with... our guilt master? Yeah, the one who's responsible for bringing all of us Akihabara guild members who frequent this place together. We haven't been able to make contact at all for some time now, and it's starting to get worried something may have happened. I really am sorry to hear that, but what makes you think I can help? Well, we thought about consulting with some police investigators, first and foremost, of course. The problem is, we have no idea what our good master's real name is, or address is. We have almost nothing to go on. We discussed it within, within the guild, and that's when your name came up. My name? To be honest, I'm not following you at all. Kakia Gongin, do you happen to know a transient named Okuninushi? Huh? It was also apparently once known as Lord Onomuchi. I I do know him. I've known him well for a very long time. But why? You do? That's fantastic. Oh, is that Daikoku? A member of a girl told us about him. I think we did have a brief flashback uh, in his uh what what's called breakdown from uh. Akia about that showcased a silhouette of Daikoku. Said that if someone ever goes missing here in Tokyo, there's no better person to ask for help. What was it? Would have known to bring up my name. I'm not sure if you know her. It was a producer in our guild. She's always coordinating collaborations. Her networking skills are second to none. Her name is... Ah, so this is what she was doing. Nice to see you again, Lian and Chi. I trust things are going well. Oh, Christine! What brings you to Akihabara? <laughs> Suffice it to say, I know that you're the one in charge of the Taito Ward area. But you've seemed a bit down to lately. So I... But you've seemed down a bit lately. So I wanted to check in on you and make sure you weren't having any troubles. Are things progressing well? Will the participants be amused? This is a game after all. It's strictly entertainment. If people aren't having fun, then I see no worth in any of it. That's the sole reason we entertainers are here, you know. 
So this is where they're based, uh, beside the creators. <laughs> oh dear, Yan and Chi, are you alright? Have I said something to upset you? Oh, I'm fine, Christine. Don't worry. This is going to be a fun co-op for sure. So just leave everything to me. I can handle it. If it's alright with you. Following Team Delos' lead, you and Kotobu Paz proceed very carefully, even deeper, into the deep web. I really like that, fr that phrase, even deeper. I think it's a reference to Team Delos' original story. Hey Team Delos, can I ask you something? Mm hmm Why do you livestream? What's your end goal with it? Why do I do what I do? Is it obvious? I don't know the answer. Then I hunt. I look for the prey that everyone else desires. The prey that anyone else can see value of. I aim to be the first one to catch it and drop it on the world's doorstep. That's what I do ever do. Okay, my reason's a bit different, but sure. Game the most practically hisses, smiling and burying his fangs as he does so. His animal instincts are full display. So, you want me first then? Just you, head of everyone else. Yeah, of course! But yeah, lots of competition after all. So naturally, I want to come out on top. Every time! <laughs> Case in point. While I was answering your question, some other hyenas seem to have gotten wind of us. Maybe we came in contact with one of their traps. Regardless, you gotta be careful around there, like. Huh? Uh, ah! I know these faces as well. They're live streamers too. Dirty streamers, same as me. Wait, are we being recorded? Dirty streamers, what does that mean? I know, OnlyFans, stuff like that. Yo, you two! Get behind me! Stay hidden as best as you can! What? Huh? You heard what I just said! Just get behind me already! I ain't gonna let no 2-bit two, two streamers get unauthorized footage of my collaborators! If there's 10 streamers all streaming the same thing, my viewership will only be 10% of what it usually is! So, you're only worried about yourself? I see just how it is. <laughs> Realistically, viewership stands to drop even worse than that. Videos are only as valuable as their exclusivity. That's if I let them get what they want, though. I'm not about to give up my ace and hold that easy. Never battle. Time! <laughs> no. No? There you go, okay. Fucking diagonals. <laughs> bit late with that, but sure. ケース<笑><笑> ビリーデン。力下から下たり重力必死。これぞ<笑> I like to have the slash loaded before I was able to. They vanished. <laughs> Must have logged out. Are you okay, Team Los? No, oh, there's a lot of blood coming from your head. Uh, it's not blood. When an Africa gets injured, it leaks data. That's all. 
So you're bleeding data. Who are they? Ah, I told you. That shoe is like me. Ah, dang. Looks like they're uploading already, too. <laughs> uploading? Uploading what? Rather than answering, Tina Lewis makes a few motions and a screen pops up next to him. This is her channel. Take a good look for yourself. What the heck? This is awful! The edited footage appearing on the screen while wow, instant editing <laughs> shows the battle that just unfolded, but only the parts where Teen Lowe's attacked. This effectively makes Teen Lowe's look like the aggressor. Dirty streamer Teen Lowe's added again. Popular streamer's one sided bullying. Full assault captured live and uncut. <laughs> I should take some pointers from this. That's not fair. They were the ones who attacked us, but they're making us look like they, you, you're the one who picked a fight. Eh, like I said, they're dirty streamers, same as me. I always like back in kind, though. Oh, yeah, there's a video response from me already, linked on the sidebar. <laughs> that was fast. Uh, and your video is just as bad as theirs! <laughs> flame for a flame and hit piece for a hit piece. It seems that the code of streaming world, as far as Tina Lowe's and his associates are concerned. <laughs> Oh no, now some of the other members of the Akihabara Guild seem to have gotten mixed up in this video hate war. <laughs> Katobu pause friends as he watches the creative works of his friends Kuniyoshi and Hecate, among others, uh, get cruelly satirized in a rogue streamers group's videos. Rude. But, wait a minute, Dinos, are you actually standing up for them in your responses? Ugh, I'm not standing up for anybody. You'd think I'd be caught doing something soft like that. They're screwing lies, so I'm just setting the record straight by dropping truth bombs on them to shut them up. Hecate, for example, doesn't limit herself to specific races or species. She'll ship anybody. Everybody knows that. Always pointed, always digging deep. That's Tina Glossa's channel, baby. You can count on me for the real truth. And you're just um, rubbing salt on the wound, huh? Yeah, I feel bad for poor Hecate. At this point, you're just babbling. Mm. By the way, are you two okay after that fight? You aren't injured, are you? The double boss. Alright then. Why did he shield us? Doesn't it look worse if it's just you? I mean, I am a dirty streamer. I play dirty! So it's fine if my name gets tracked to the mud a little. The difference between me and them is info only has value to me if it's true. If it's made up, I'm not interested. Ah, alright. So, even though he's clickbaity, he, he's not gonna stoop to lies and misinformation. So, what if the truths are boring? What would we do then? Huh? What do you mean, what would I do? I'd present it as is. What else? The key is to dig deep and drag out what's, whatever's hidden all the way at the bottom. That's the most valuable dirt. Making something dirty and something being dirty are not the same. People seem to confuse that fact all the time. So, what you're saying is, you're not the kind to spread lies or have fun at others' expense. He just takes out the truth, which is true to his original story, I believe. The one who likes to seep into gaps. Do you even have to ask? I'm a hound! A hound's duty is to hunt prey, then drag it out to the open. You ain't no hound if you toss around and tear apart the prey you hunted down. We hounds seek what's most unclean, but we absolutely do not take something clean and make it dirty. Hmm? What's wrong? You're looking at me all weird. Just say you need light. I think you might be a good person after all. Let's say we make a video about that. The heck are you saying? That won't make for a good video. Nobody would watch that crap. Mm. Oh, <laughs> You're not used to compliments, are you? It's kind of cute how flustered you are. Couldn't see myself falling for you. <laughs> Shut up! We're almost at the spot where we'll find our gun master, so let's just keep moving. Alright, we're here. We're around the spot is where Hercule Master is always hanging out. Mm hmm? Oh! It's, uh, what's his face? <laughs> Enigma. Hello, I welcome you here. Are you the Akihabara Guild Master? Or I guess his avatar. I seem rather prim and popper. <laughs> You're the Guild Master, not you, Enigma. 
Enigma? This is one of the AI the Good Masters made. An artificially intelligent being. Hello, my name is Enigma. It's nice to meet you. And I'm Kotopopas. It's nice to meet you too. The pleasure is all mine. I've been waiting for you, Arthur and Kotopopas. You've been waiting? <laughs> Cut the chit chat! Like I said, we're here to see our maker, not you! My creator, the Akia Bar Guildmaster, no longer exists in this world. Huh? What do you mean no longer exists here? I have another question for you. You said you're waiting for us. What? Ex why exactly? Also, where did the music go? That's correct. I've been waiting for you. Now that you're here, the duplication can begin. What? <clears throat> what? Now then, the endgame is upon us, and I too must prepare to make my presence known. There's an instant closing swap. The man murmurs to himself as he changes into something that looks an awful like what a dealer at a casino might wear if he were preparing to defend the house with his life. When the number changes, so too does the value. And when the value changes, so too does the world. So if I wish to flip the world on its head, I need only reverse its fortunes. But it is quite difficult to change the system if the numbers involved are limited. Fortunately, deep within the Tokyo Underground, there is a place of great interest. An unclean digital pleasure dome. And the only place where that which is singular can be reproduced ad infinitum. Now, my dearly beloved, my one and only in this world wide world. This time for revolution in Tokyo is at hand. Soon, uh, this game shall see its end.